Hey everyone, I'm your super dentist and welcome back to my channel. This is the part 3 of Cleft series. In my previous video, I had spoken about my journey and the foundational steps that has to be taken up till the age of 2 years. In this video, we are going to cover about a very crucial and dynamic phase, the mixed dentition phase from the age of 3 to 12 years. In this phase, the child will be having a milk teeth and the permanent teeth are in a verge of eruption. Hence, our focus shifts from foundational repair to guiding growth and preventing problems. As a pediatric dentist who have been through this, I see this stage as a building the framework for a healthy and beautiful smile your child will have for the lifetime. The core goal is no longer about the survival or the initial repair. It's proactive management. We are actively monitoring, guiding and preparing for the final steps in adolescence. There are three key areas we focus on. Key area one is the allula bone graft. Now this is without doubt one of the most important procedure that a child will go through in this phase. So let us break down allula bone graft. It's a surgery where the surgeon will take a small amount of bone usually from the hip or called as iliac crest and places it in the bony gap of your child's upper gums. It does two vital things. One. It provides the foundation for the canine teeth to erupt. The canine teeth erupts at around 11 to 12 years of age and it requires a solid bone to descend to. Without the bone graft, it doesn't have any way to go. Second, it stabilizes the upper dental arch. The bone graft connects the two sides of the upper jaw, creating the symmetry of the face, lips and the nose and makes the future orthodontic treatment or braces treatment more effective. The timing is very crucial. This grafting procedure is done around the age of 7 to 11 years of mixed dentition phase when the canine teeth is just about to erupt. The dentist determines this stage by evaluating the x-rays. The x-rays of the canine will be taken. If two-third of canine root development is completed, then this is an ideal time for grafting procedure. Key area two is proactive dental and orthodontic monitoring. As a pediatric dentist, my role is to be a detective to find the common challenges that is unique to cleft anatomy. A very common dental issues that we see in cleft lip patients are hypodontia that is missing teeth, supernumerality that is an extra teeth or malformed teeth. Due to defect in the enamel formation during the developmental stages, the teeth can have unusual shapes or weaker enamel which makes it more prone to cavities. This is also a stage where a comprehensive orthodontic treatment begins in earnest. This orthodontic intervention is very crucial. It is important that the jaws are properly aligned and adequate amount of space is created for the bone graft to be placed. For this very purpose, variety of appliances can be used. It can be removable, it can be fixed or it can be combination of both. Key area 3 is heightened importance of oral hygiene. This might sound very basic but it's absolutely critical. Oral hygiene is your child's first line of defense against cavities and oral health problems. Now why it's a bigger challenge? It's because of the anatomy, the surgical scars, the crowded teeth, the malpositioned teeth and the orthodontic appliances that creates nooks and crannies that are hard to clean. And because of the enamel defect, the teeth near to the cleft has unusual shapes and weaker enamel, making it susceptible to decay the moment they erupt. What are the practical strategy? Supervision is the key. Parents, you will likely need to monitor your child's brushing and flossing more than you do for the other children. It's not because of the lack of skill, but because of the unique anatomy the child possesses. Second, the right tools, the electric toothbrushes, the single tufted brushes to clean around the orthodontic appliances and the fluoride toothpaste are non-negotiable. And finally, diet and fluoride. Sugary snacks and drinks should be restricted or strictly reduced. And it is recommended that professional fluoride treatment is done at every checkup to strengthen that vulnerable enamel. A cavity in a cleft patient isn't just a cavity. It can complicate future surgeries and orthodontic treatment. Hence, preventing DK is a team effort between you, child and the dentist. Even though mouth is a primary focus during this phase, we cannot ignore its connection to speech and hearing. Even after successful palatal surgery, some children will have issues with nasal sounding speech due to velopharyngeal insufficiency. Hence, continued work with speech therapist is essential. 
muscles of the palate or the roof of the mouth helps in opening the eustachian tube that is there in the pharynx now this tube helps in draining the fluid from the ear as well as equalizing the pressure in cleft lip and palate patients this mechanism is disrupted which can increase the chances of infection hence regular checkup with ENT is a must the mixed dentition is a busy one it can feel like a whirlwind of orthodontic appointments surgical planning and constant reminder to brush but i want you to see it for what it is active and purposeful construction you the parent are the project manager you are coordinating the team of surgeons orthodontists pediatric dentists the speech therapist and the ENT surgeon we are all laying the bricks for the strong functional and beautiful smile that your child is growing into and that's it for today if you found this video helpful please give it a thumbs up and if you have any doubts regarding the procedures or the things that has been spoken in this video please leave a comment below i would love to answer your queries please share this video with your family and friends so that we can spread the awareness and do not forget to subscribe to my channel thank you for watching see you in the next one